if you're wondering where we're sitting, we are sitting on top of the structural battery pack. It really is quite amazing. It is something that we haven't seen really ever. The center console is slid forward on rails to engage with the instrument panel. Right here is where the rear giga casting is. This console slides back and forth. It's absolutely mind blowing to be standing under a vehicle on a hoist and have absolutely nothing for the floor structure. The level of refinement and integration is incredible. Tesla is not wasting any opportunity. It's just amazing the amount of integration that we're seeing. If you're an engineering nerd, make sure you have a change of pants or two. In this video, the team at Munro Live tear into Tesla's structural battery pack. Let's get straight into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store. So check out the links in the pinned comment below, and thanks for your support. Now before we get into the highlights of this Munro Life teardown, I just want to point something out. In case you're new here, you have a short memory, or you're really fond of Mary Jane, or maybe all of the above. It was less than two years ago, late September 2020, when Tesla held their Battery Investor Day and unveiled their plans for the 4680 cell and structural battery pack. Less than two years later, this technology has been integrated into products that are now being delivered to consumers. Tesla. Just a car company, less than two years ago, unveil a plan. We've made a better cell than everyone else in the battery industry. And we've also invented a structural battery pack, which no one's done before. And now we're going to start putting these in vehicles and selling them to customers. This will save us a shit ton of money, increase range, reduce mass, and allow us to continue absolutely dominating. One more time. Less than two years later, these cells and the structural battery pack are now a thing in real products being delivered to actual customers. Maybe some context would help. I think it was around two years ago that Trevor Meltdown Milton first unveiled the computer renderings of the very, very legitimate real, real truck, the Nikola Badger, which has yet to come to market. Actually, it was never going to come to market. But you guys get the point, right? This is stunningly fast progress. Less than two years from unveiling to consumers buying these products with this technology inside. Of course, at the time, the self-hating basement dwelling adult versions of Tesla Q said these cells were a joke, they'd never exist, it was a fraud, a scam, as if Tesla could invent a new battery cell, blah, 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 blah. But even some of the Tesla bulls were skeptical at how soon this technology would come to market. With that said, over to Monroe and Associates. If you're wondering where we're sitting, we are sitting on top of the structural battery pack. It really is quite amazing. When we dropped this from the car, it drew a crowd of roughly 30 to 40 people at Monroe. It is something that we haven't seen really ever. So a couple of things here. First of all, the very fact that this drew a huge crowd of absolute engineering nerds should tell you everything you need to know. If that's not enough, as Corey points out, they've never seen anything like this, not even close which obviously means that Tesla is just a car company. The competition is coming and you should definitely not own Tesla stock, right? First of all, it is just phenomenal that these seats are mounted to this battery pack. When we first saw these seats on the pack, I said, no way they're gonna mount the seats in the carpet in the center console and then shove it up in the car. There you go, Sandy Monroe, I owe you your dinner. But when we look at the top cover on the Model 3 and the Model Y, these were threaded fasteners. They're now SPRs, self-piercing rivets. This allows them to be low profile. From a removal standpoint, this was uh, pretty straightforward. There were very few bolts uh, inside the vehicle that needed to be removed to drop the pack. Primarily, uh, as you can see here, uh, we were dealing with uh, mainly bolts around the perimeter. There were 38 total that were holding the pack to the body itself. So there's this small riser right here, which interface with two feet coming down from the instrument panel. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, two stamped steel brackets, which we can show on the interior of the vehicle. And one of the uh, unique features about how the battery pack with the seats and the center console is loaded in and then assembled is uh, right here, the feet of those brackets would meet. And if you come to the rear, you can see and additional two bolts that are used to hold the center console in place uh, in order to make it easier to deck this. Once the battery is installed, the center console is slid forward on rails to engage with the instrument panel. And you can see there then that those two bolt uh, interfaces now are engaging with a uh, bracket that's on the battery pack itself. So that'll hold the center console in place. You then put a piece of trim over it snaps right in place and that's all set to go, uh, then you can go ahead and uh, bolt the, uh, or 
handle your low voltage connections from the center console panel. A couple of quick things here. I know this is getting down in the engineering nerdy weeds, but that's the whole point of these teardowns, right? Notice that console sliding forward. This is to make things much easier and faster for people actually assembling these vehicles on the assembly line. Brilliant idea. Kind of makes you wonder why other automotive manufacturers aren't doing the exact same thing. Recall that saying from Elon Musk, the best part is no part. The best process, no process. The fact that the seats have been mounted to this structural battery pack so the whole thing can just get shoved up into the bottom of the car. Brilliant. So incredibly exciting as an engineering nerd to watch the progress Tesla is making. Of course, as a consumer, as an owner of a Tesla Model Y, who gives a f how the thing's put together? It's completely irrelevant. But from a Tesla stock investor's point of view, we are seeing huge quantum leaps forward. Every time I see Tesla's deleted apart or a process, I think, wow, it's going to be quicker to put these cars together. They're going to save more money. This means they could be more profitable and or lower prices. And we see Tesla continues to iterate and iterate and iterate. Elon Musk has recently pointed out this is still very early days for the structural battery pack. There's a lot of room for improvement. But as we've already and will continue to see further in the highlights from this teardown, the team over at Munro & Associates are already nutting left, right and center over this thing that has huge room for improvement. Just again goes to show how far ahead of everyone else in the automotive industry Tesla is just in terms of manufacturing. And as we know, since Tesla is just a car company, this is obviously the only possible area they could be ahead of anyone in. So it's good that they are. <clears throat> yeah, and Julian, I got a question for you. So you said 38 bolts plus mm -hmm. two, so about 40 fasteners to cure the pack. Uh, yeah, so it's 38 uh, securing the pack, including there were four just above the penthouse here. Uh, you can see here these interfaced with the rear uh, giga casting on the vehicle. Uh, these were the only uh, real, I'll say, structural bolts on the interior of the vehicle. The rest of them were for uh, securing things like the center console uh, in place. So you do have the some stampings on the the rails going, you know, fore aft. But right here is where the rear giga casting is. And notice that the shape, the witness mark from the pressure of that giga casting pressing against the seal is really unique. And the one area we notice where it could be a potential problem is right here where it transitions from this flat surface down, there's not as much of a witness mark. So we were wondering if this wasn't pushing as hard here. So you notice this is smashed real hard. I'm sure there's a highly inappropriate joke here about smashing real hard. I'll save that one for another time. Note, however, the team at Munro & Associates may have discovered a potential issue here, potential future problem, some room for improvement. Of course, they could be wrong. Tesla may have their own reasons, but let's pay attention to this. So it had a real good compression. And then right here, it still has a lot of a lot of push and you know, compliance to give. It may have done its job perfectly fine, but this is an area where I'd want to monitor if I was Tesla to make sure that you know, we're getting good compression. We did notice that the cover itself looks like it has some sort of clear coating, like a, like a clear powder coating. Uh, we're not sure what that's for, most likely so that this sticks real well, because if it was just metal, you may have to do like a plasma treat. Um, the fact that this console slides back and forth is, is really kind of wild. That it's absolutely mind blowing to be standing under a vehicle on a hoist and have absolutely nothing for the floor structure. So as we know, words matter a lot. Three in particular worth reiterating there. Given the context, Money on Associates tear down a ton of stuff, they're automotive experts. We just heard absolutely mind blowing. Not interesting, not cool, not unique, not innovative, not creative absolutely mind-blowing. And I just want to take a moment to point something out that's critically important. If, of course, we're now in hypothetical land, but if the 420 IQ geniuses on Wall Street covering Tesla stock were competent at what they were doing, no doubt in the coming days, we would see a torrent of new research notes explicitly discussing this teardown Tesla's dominance over the so-called competition, their innovations in manufacturing, the fact that the crew over at Munro and Associates are nutting left, right, and center over this structural battery pack. Every one of the Wall Street research firms covering Tesla stock would be all over this, if they were competent. Now, I'm not saying they're incompetent, I'm just saying, let's wait a few days and wait for those notes to appear, or not. At Monroe and Associates, we've seen the evolution of the automotive industry for the past 30 to 40 years. Myself, with 17 years at Monroe and Associates, I've come from a background of benchmarking vehicles where you'd have hundreds of stamp parts for the for the where this front mega giga casting is, hundreds and hundreds of parts in the back. Translation: Tesla has literally, and I mean literally, deleted many hundreds of parts. Hundreds of parts, not just hundreds of parts, hundreds of processes. Parts just don't suddenly automatically arrange themselves and assemble themselves into a vehicle. You gotta stamp them, move them, store them, join them, and so on. Again, back to Elon's quote. Best part is no part. Best process, no process. 
And Tesla is really living up to this mantra, deleting parts and processes left, right, and center. And again, I want to stress, anyone in the automotive industry could have done what Tesla is doing in terms of automotive manufacturing, the huge casting, but they didn't. It's worth pondering why, actually, I know the answer, because they're all lazy and complacent motherfuckers who are about to go out of business because they didn't do shit. They got complacent and comfortable, were too scared to rock the boat. And any renegade engineer who even proposed such a crazy idea on how the company could save shit tons of money and continue to improve and gain an advantage over the competition were told, hey, that's not your job, okay? Just shut up and keep doing what you've always done, otherwise you get fired. And the level of refinement and integration is incredible. And Tesla is not wasting any opportunity to integrate the casting for multiple mounting features. Even this small little fin right there, it, there's a little fin of aluminum with two rib nuts, um, with two bolts holding this, this bracket that's holding the low voltage line, I mean the high voltage line for the AC compressor, as well as a, a thermal tube. It's just amazing the amount of integration that we're seeing. I believe this weighed 1,200 pounds. Do you know the exact weight, Julian? Uh, yeah, it was uh, 1,198. Okay. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the, uh, what's it called, the uh, the inferior measurement system, you know, foot and inches and pounds and all that shit that just makes absolutely no sense. Just for some context, that's approximately as much as your girlfriend weighs. That's with everything you see here. Everything we see here. Which yep. is incredible because a couple of the other EVs we have in this building, we have a Rivian over here, we have three or four other EVs we can't talk about. The batteries will weigh twice that, just the batteries. No seat, no carpet, no trim. Stop the fucking press. This is the single most important thing we've heard in this entire video. I wanna make sure that nobody missed that. What we just saw, Tesla's battery plaque, plus the fucking seats, plus a bunch of trim as well, weighs about half as much as just the battery pack in some competing electric vehicles. Even if you don't understand physics that well, if you understand the bigger, the heavier an electric vehicle is, the more energy is needed to move it. That's why your obese girlfriend gets out of breath going up and down stairs. The more energy required means the more batteries, means the more expensive. When it comes to electric vehicles or girlfriends, the less mass, the better. The fact that there's a structural battery pack plus seats, plus a bunch of other crap as well, weighs about half as much as a battery in a competing, bro, Please just understand how important this is. But remember, the competition is coming. When we opened the frunk, um, I noticed that the super manifold and super bottle and the, um, the high voltage AC compressor heat pump, they've already made some improvements on how the routing of the high voltage line uh, goes in the bay. So Tesla is always continually improving. Unsurprising, but it is good to know. Tesla isn't just happy completely reinventing the wheel, so to speak. Once they've reinvented the wheel, they've got to make that new wheel even better and even better and continue to iterate. So while Tesla's continually improving, continually, constantly, never ending improvement, the rest of the automotive industry is continually and never endingly not improving. I wonder how that ends. I think it's incredibly well done. You have to have context that goes back not only a few years, but decades to truly uh, understand how amazing it is to see a vehicle with no floor and the seats mounted to the, the structure on the top of a pack. So I think it's relatively safe to say that the crew at Munro and Associates are fairly impressed with Tesla's structural battery pack and their never ending improvements, deletion of parts and processes when it comes to automotive manufacturing. I also think it's equally safe to say that we're not gonna hear shit about this from any of the Wall Street analysts. I hope I'm wrong. If I am, I'll definitely eat the UAW's eggplant after I get some tips from the old POTUS on how to deep throat that thing without gagging. As always, there's a link in the description to the full teardown video and I implore you all, please Please watch this. If you own Tesla stock and you're not a complete nut a moron, you need to understand this stuff. And lastly, don't forget to join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link at the pinned comment. I've just posted a brand new exclusive Q&A video, plus you'll gain access to an archive of well over 100 previous Q&As, plus instant up-to-date access to my Tesla stock price targets out over the next decade in the bear case, space case, bull case, and hyper bull case. And there's plenty of other perks as well. So I'll see you over on Patreon. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So 
check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.